Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Common Network Protocols, Part 1. Today we're going to be talking about IPv4 and IPv6, and then we're going to conclude with Network Storage Protocols. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about IPv4 and IPv6. With the internet protocols, IPv4 still has dominance over IPv6 in the network. This will change, and it is already beginning to do so. Both IPv4 and IPv6 operate at layer 3, the network layer, of the OSI model. Both IPv4 and IPv6 operate at the internet layer of the TCP IP reference model. The protocols are similar in function and yet are different in how they provide those functions. Both protocols are responsible for network addressing and routing operations within a network or networks. While IPv4 has performed these duties adequately for many years, IPv6 is slowly assuming those responsibilities and will eventually be the dominant protocol. As a matter of fact, most of the world is now out of routable IPv4 addresses, which means that the switch to IPv6 is already starting to occur. So let's do an overview of both IPv4 and IPv6. And we're going to start with IPv4. It's a 32-bit addressing scheme that provides over 4 billion possible unique network addresses. It's commonly represented in a dotted decimal format. The numbers are separated by decimals. Each unit represents 8 bits or 1 byte. IPv4 can use different methods of transmitting data through the networks. It can use unicast, which is one-to-one -one communication. It can use multicast, which is one to a few communication, or it can use broadcast transmissions, which is one to many communication. IPv6, on the other hand, is a 128-bit addressing scheme that provides over 340 undecacillion possible unique addresses. That is a lot of addresses. It's commonly represented in a comma-separated hexadecimal format. Each set contains two bytes, which is equal to 16 bits, and each set is separated from the others by a colon. Like IPv4, IPv6 uses unicast and multicast transmissions, but it does not use a broadcast type transmission. It does use any cast transmission, which is one to the closest communications as one of its means of replacing the broadcast transmission. With that done, let's move on to network storage protocols. Before we move on to the protocols, let's talk about the storage area network and the network attached storage. The storage area network, or SAN, and the network attached storage, the NAS, often get confused with one another, but they are actually very different. The SAN is an actual network of devices that have the sole purpose of storing data efficiently. The NAS is a specifically designed network appliance that has been configured to store data more efficiently than standard storage methods. They still kind of sound similar, but the difference is, is that the NAS is a data storage appliance that is placed on a network, while the SAN is a network of data storage devices. It's not uncommon for the storage area network to contain multiple network attached storage devices. Now let's move on to the protocols. We're going to start with fiber channel. It's a high-speed network technology that was originally developed to operate over fiber optic cables only. The standards have been modified to allow the use of copper cabling in conjunction with the fiber optic cables. It's commonly used to connect storage area networks together. Fiber Channel uses Fiber Channel Protocol, or FCP, as its transport layer protocol, or its layer 4 protocol, to transmit SCSI, that's Small Computer System Interface, commands, 
to storage devices, as in it uses FCP to transmit SCSI commands to network attached storage appliances. Then we have FC over Ethernet, or FCOE. It's a layer two protocol used to transmit FC commands over an Ethernet network. As a layer two protocol, FCOE is non-routable. And finally, we have Internet SCSI, or iSCSI. It's an IP-based network standard used to connect data storage facilities and storage attached networks. It is a layer three protocol. It allows SCSI commands and processes to take place over long distance, as iSCSI is a routable protocol. And that concludes this session on Common Network Protocols, Part 1. I talked about IPv4 and IPv6, and then I had a brief discussion on network storage protocols. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.